Hey, before we hop into this episode, let's talk about why your website and digital presence isn't working. Now, I know what you're thinking, Michael, we talk all about the websites all the time. You talk about the websites, the website's a hammer, yada, 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 we get it. But for real though, it's shocking to me how much guesswork still takes place and how it's having a detrimental effect on what opportunities you are able to leverage. Now, over the last decade, especially for the OG DP beers, you know I've poured my soul into assembling a team that cares deeply about the progress of the retail auto industry, that believes in my mission to enrich and empower dealers to perpetually grow. Now I'm making my amazing marketing team accessible to the dealer playbook community so that you can start to thrive rather than merely survive. Right now, we're providing a just-for-you free website diagnostic that will show you exactly what you need to do in a priority sequence so that you can finally get the answers you need. Claim yours by visiting www.flexdealer.com forward slash website audit. That's www.flexdealer.com forward slash website dash audit. You know, I, I think I was talking about it on Clubhouse the other day. Like, you have to account for failure. I don't plan for it, but I have to account mm -hmm. for it. And perhaps failure yeah. in the moment is knowing that I won't want to get up tomorrow morning. Yeah. Knowing that I won't want to do all those follow-up phone calls or prospect for new customers. I account mm -hmm. for it. But to your point, like, having a bigger reason why... It's crazy, man. Like if I gave up in the early days of my business because there were I was doing things that I didn't want to do, right? Like I, I call myself Mr. Miyagi sometimes. Not to anybody, yeah. but like I was the guy, like <clears throat> when you own a business, you're, you you kind of have to, oh, I'm mopping floors today and then tomorrow I got to fix the toilets and then I'm going to be on a sales call trying to close down a million dollar contract and then mm -hmm. I'm back to like putting a hinge on the fence and like you're doing all these things that you don't want to do. But you're right. Like in the back of my mind, I was like, but all of this is a means to an end. And I'm and so it doesn't matter about what this stuff is right in front of me. It matters about what the end is that I have in my mind. And that that's mm -hmm. ultimately what made me want to show up every every day. For sure. So For sure. like stoplights, man, on the road. Mm, yeah. You know, you, you, you know where you're going and you know why you're going there. But there are certain laws that you have to stop and obey in order to get where you're going. Right. And sometimes when we're, when we're on our own journey and doing our own things, we don't want to stop and obey the laws, but that's what separates people who get where they want to go and who don't get where they want to go. Man. I love that. I'm, I'm letting it sink in here for a minute. <laughs> yeah. Um, dang, that's so true. I love that. And, that also feeds into then the discipline part of it because you don't get a physique like Isaac Brown by lifting weights once a week. I mean, maybe you do, but it's going to take you 150 years. Um, and so, but you also can't train now other professional athletes, right? Cause you're the, are you the fitness trainer or what are you for the, for the Hamilton tiger cats? Yeah, I'm the I'm the head strength coach for the Thai Cats. Now, I can train other athletes in any other league, but in, within our league, anybody that plays on another CFL team, I can't train them. And also, I, I'm the head strength coach for our pro soccer team too. Oh, so anybody, any any other players within the Canadian Premier League, can't train them because I train the the Forge. Right. So I can train NFL players and NBA and NHL. Right. But CFL and CPL. Yeah. You're locked down. Only the tie cats and only the They got you on yeah. lockdown. Um, that, that's pretty me. cool, though. But, you know, what comes to my mind is, um, you know, as I think about the parallels to sports teams and, and the business teams, um, you know, so you're working with individuals, but you're working ultimately with the team as a whole. How do you how do you cater as a leader, how do you cater the training to the individual so that it's something that will, you know, 
resonate with them? Because I'm imagining you're having to con- continually inspire and motivate and encourage and like, how right. do you do that for the individual, but also map that to the collective of the team? Because ultimately you have to get the right. whole team to a certain place, right? How, how does that work right. for you? I put it like this. <clears throat> you go to a restaurant, right? And there's how many, uh, so let's say you order steak and potatoes, right? Steak and potatoes is the general meal. But I like my steak rare. You might like yours well done, mm. right? So I, I, you know, with our guys, I give a general program in season, off season. And from there, I tailor certain movements to each and to, to the individual players. For the most part, by position is how I usually do it. And then you'll have guys within the position that, that have certain restrictions or, you know, some type of injury they may be coming off of. And that's where you kind of, you give them a, a special order, right? Special yeah. order meal type thing. So yeah, it's, it's, it's challenging, but it, I love the challenge, but because it keeps, it keeps me on my toes, you know, and it's the same with soccer, right? Keeps me on my toes. And I love the fact that in this role, like, I don't think there's any clearer example of this outside of fitness where, where it would just sound ridiculous in any other context, but if you couldn't catch and also pass back the medicine ball, then you failed as a leader. But yet in business, for some reason, it is entirely okay for leaders to not be able to catch, you know, listen with your business ears to catch and then pass back the, the, the medicine ball. Um, so what does that mean? Like, how do you stay disciplined as a leader so that you can lead by example so that your team is never looking at you and being like, yeah, but coach, you're, you're sitting there, mm-hmm. you know, eating a Baconator while we're running drills. Yeah. I, I take the same approach that I took when I was in school as a player. Like, you know, like I said, I would show up early because as a leader, I told everyone else to show up early. Right. I would give everything I had in the drills. I would do exactly what the coach said. So therefore, whenever I could, whenever I would see a player talking back to the coach or slacking off or loafing, as we call it, I have credibility that I can go get at his head. Right. As a coach, it's the same thing. I am a walking mirror. You know what I'm saying? So I always have to reflect what I'm preaching. You know, and and a lot of times when I'm, you know, with my guys at the facility, they want to do certain workouts with me. They want me to get in on it, throw on the med ball. And, you know, so there's certain there's certain individual players that they help keep me accountable at all times, because when they come in to work out, I know that it's time for me to do something physical with them in their workout. Right. And, and that's another piece that I love about coaching is because it's not just give directions and watch them follow. It's interactive. It's an, it's an actual relationship. It's not a transaction when they come in and out of the gym. It's, it's, a, it's a real human interaction where you're doing things with them instead of just barking directions and then watching them do it. You know, you're, you're sweating with them. You're bleeding with them, you know. If, if I could put on a helmet and get on the field with him, I would do that too. But I'm a, I'm gonna leave that alone. Cause I'm, <laughs> I'm removed from the game. I'm removed, but I'm not removed from the weight room. So that's where I, that's where I participate with them. And it drives them even further. Mm. I love your choice of words there. Participation. Cause I think so often it's like, Oh, where's the leader? Oh, the leader's up. At, you see that window over there. They sit up in that window over there. And, yeah. and then we work in silos. We don't communicate <laughs> enough and then we're not participating enough. Um, right. You know, we, we've even had an experience on in my company uh, recently where we onboarded a, a, a few new team members that then created more bandwidth for those that had been here a little while, which then ultimately it always trickles back up to me mm-hmm. and it created more bandwidth for me. But then that bandwidth highlighted things that I needed to be doing better as the leader, because yeah. I'm like, whoa, we're missing. Oh, yeah. crap. So what do I do? My first reaction is not to just start barking orders, like you said, is to go, okay, here we go. 100%. Let's get in it. Let's get our hands dirty. 
And, and so from your experience as both a coach, as a trainer, as a, a life business coach, motivational speaker, I mean, does that, what's your take on the, the whole participation thing? Like how, how often, because I know a lot of leaders are asking this, but how long will I be required to get back into the dirt and roll up my sleeves mm -hmm. and participate? Mm -hmm. I thought I built a I, business in order yeah. to just <clears throat> kind of check, check out a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. So what, what's your take on that? My take on it is I'll give you, I'll give you two, I'll give you two, I'll give you my, my take on it and I'll give you an example. My take on it is how long will you do it? You'll do it as long as it's important and it's a value to you. That's how long you'll do it. And here is my example. I brag on our head coach all the time because he is honestly, he's the best leader that I know walking around right now. Yeah. Honestly, right. I'm not even going to lie. Right. Um, so here's a small example. Just last week. So in our gym and he does things like this all the time and it's always, it's just who he is. Right. But it, it rubs off on you. You know, he's not going to walk past a piece of trash on the ground and tell someone to pick it up. He, he's going to pick it up. Anything that he feels needs to be done, he's going to do it. It, it. He says it's never your job or his job or her job. It's our job. Everyone. It's everyone's job. Right. So here's a small example. So in our weight room, I wanted to, you know, create these these boxes for foot drills with our, with our guys. So instead of having someone come in and paint it and have it be permanent on the ground, I just decided to tape it, measured it off, taped it on the ground, put tape on. Well, throughout the week, the tape gets destroyed a little bit because of the guys, right? I come in and I was going to replace it on Monday. I come in and all the tape is redone. You know, it's off season, man. This is the off season. You know who did that? The head coach didn't say anything, didn't tell me I needed to do it. He just did it. And then he left a note on my desk. He says, Ike, your workspace and the weight room is immaculate. Keep doing great work. It's important to him, right? And that's just who he is. And he does that type of thing in every area of our organization. You know, it's, it's important to him. And for me as a leader, now, now I want to do that type of stuff, right? Now I want to go out of my way to just do something that I see needs to be done, not look for whose area it is or who needs to do it. Mm -hmm. Just do it. Just do it because that's going to create culture and other people will start doing it. You know, mm -hmm. Jesus was the example, right? He came and the disciples were waiting outside because no one was there to wash, wash their feet. So what did he do? He washed their feet. He didn't go look for someone. No, he said, okay, let me just wash it. You know? It, so he models the example. So that that's my example. You know what I love about that too is like this whole concept of like compounding returns. Because, yeah. you know, you credit him, right? As the head coach, he's leading by example. Mm -hmm. But then you're going to go and impact somebody and they're going to probably credit you or if they do or don't, it doesn't really matter. But if mm -hmm. it inspires them to go do good, they're going to go do it for somebody else who, who then for that somebody else, it, you be, they right. became the source of it. And so you have this never ending domino of right. impacting people and it doesn't matter who the instigator was. I'm Michael Cirillo, and you've been listening to the Dealer Playbook Podcast. If you haven't yet, please click the subscribe button wherever you're listening right now. Leave a rating or review and share it with a colleague. If you're ready to make big changes in your life and career and want to connect with positive, nurturing automotive professionals, join my exclusive DPB Pro community on Facebook. That's where we share information, ideas, and content that isn't shared anywhere else. I can't wait to meet you there. Thanks for listening.